sea level rise. We know it's already happening and for decades the world has been trying to stop it by curbing climate change. But tonight we can reveal that in New Zealand it's going to happen much, much sooner than anyone thought. Globally, there has been one sea level rise prediction, 30 centimetres by 2060. And that's if we stick to the Paris Agreement and keep warming below two degrees. And that's been applied to all of Aotearoa. 30 centimetres, it's easy to push to the back of our minds, despite being potentially catastrophic. But as of today, we know New Zealand doesn't have the 40 or 50 years central government, local councils and businesses have been banking on. Because two tectonic plates meet in the middle of Aotearoa, for many coastal areas, 30 centimetres is coming in only 10 or 20 years. By 2060, for some, it's approaching a metre, three times the global average. And that will cause dramatic inundation, untold damage, and ultimately force people to abandon their homes and businesses and retreat from the coast. We have two stories on this tonight, beginning in Wellington with the study's lead scientists, Richard Levy and Tim Nash, who have created a website so precise people can find how their own neighbourhood will be affected. And it will surely put the issue front of mind where it deserves to be. Orfero Bay in Wellington is one of thousands of locations around New Zealand that today has new sea level rise predictions to come to terms with the magnitude of which stunned even the scientists working on them. I was shocked. I knew it was bad. I mean, I knew we were getting sea level rise. We know that. I've been a climate scientist for 20 years. Um, but I was shocked at how quickly it can happen. As we were going through it, sort of the surprises just kept coming. While we've all been getting on with our busy daily lives, changes have been occurring. And in climate change terms, it's happening at light speed. Like most people, I thought we had more time. But we don't. We literally have a decade or two before you would look at some sort of managed retreat. So who's in the firing line? Auckland's Britomart will flood, the Northwestern Motorway, Tamaki Drive, Napier's brand new airport, Nelson's airport, and Christchurch and Dunedin have big problems too. Scientists Richard Levy and Tim Nash have spent the last five years working on this groundbreaking new sea level rise study work that began in Antarctica. They've drilled sediment and ice cores to look millions of years back into the past, painstakingly reconstructing a precise climate record to inform their future projections. It's the cutting edge of climate research. 25 degrees warmer than today. The whole world has been using one sea level rise prediction, 30 centimetres by 2060 if we limit warming to two degrees and Aotearoa has used it too. But until now, there's one factor that hasn't been included in the calculations, vertical land movement. We know New Zealand has a dynamic coastline. It can move up and down in a dramatic way in an instant, like we saw with the Kaikoura earthquake. But there are also constant tiny movements, just millimetres a year. It might not sound like much, but when you include that with sea level rise, it makes a massive difference. That's why parts of New Zealand will experience two to three times the global average of sea level rise. And we didn't know that until today. When you weave that in with the ice sheets melting, the glaciers melting and the global ocean rising, in some places it happens twice as fast. We get twice as much sea level rise than we expected. So it's a big deal. In areas where the land is subsiding, such as Auckland and Wellington, town planners no longer have 40 or 50 years to deal with this. In just 10 or 20 years, many homes, roads and rail lines will need to be raised, protected with seawalls or abandoned. Auckland was a big shock to us. The region as a whole is subsiding at, at a reasonably high rate. The scientists wanted all Kiwis to have access to this information. So they've built a website with one coloured dot for every two kilometres of the coastline. Remember the one prediction for the whole country? Well, now there are 7,434, and the blue dots are not good. That means that the ground is going down more, yes, yes. and so you're going to see more sea level rise. Yes. And it's one of those things where people think, oh, it's not going to affect me, I, I don't have to worry about it. The, the information we've produced is really making it clear that you do need to be concerned, you do need to pay attention. Climate change minister James Shaw is paying attention. Yeah, I used some quite unparliamentary language when I saw the, uh, when I saw the, the maps. 
Yeah. Sam, there have been a lot of moments over the last 30 years, I think, where scientists and climate activists have thought, you know, this is the moment that, you know, people will sit up and, and pay attention and do something about this, and those moments have passed us by. When I saw the presentation this morning, there was a level of depth to that that I felt there is simply no way uh, that anybody's going to be able to ignore this from now on. So what does sea level rise actually look like? Back in Orfedal Bay, 30 centimetres is only 20 years away. It's on the front line of climate change in New Zealand. What that means is the 100-year coastal big, big storm surge, big coastal flood, they will be happening every year. This place will be in serious trouble. Orfedal Bay's residents know what's coming for many of the rest of us. They're already feeling the impact you really get a sense of the power of the sea and it can pop into your home and say hello. Liquid Himalayas are coming across the road, uh, slamming into houses and are doing considerable damage. Those mountain-like waves have forced them into action, lobbying their local council to build bigger seawalls and install early warning systems. But that won't work forever with what's coming, and they know it. People have got to put their foot on the pedal, you know. We respect the science, we believe in the science. Now get on and start developing those adaptation plans. Start drilling down bay by bay, community by community and get the best strategies in place and then actually start spending money sorting it out to the degree that is reasonable. I do think that decision makers uh, will start to act on that because they're going to have to. Levy and Nash are already speaking to many councils and the finance and insurance sectors. And now they want all of us to hear them too. Instead of putting head in the sand, and you just don't have time. In some places, 10 years is all we have. So if the head goes in the sand and you knew, then it's sort of on you, isn't it? This is a red alert, a siren blaring at the loudest it can go.